All right, so you've got a brand new action camera, you go out and you film an epic mountain bike ride, and then your footage looks like this. It's not great. It's not what you wanted, nice. and you definitely were hoping for better. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I have been using the DJI Osmo Action 3 in a variety of different settings with a variety of results. Sometimes it turns out buttery and smooth, gliding through a forest, and sometimes it gets fuzzy and hazy and choppy and the footage is irreparable. Now I found these things to be true on the Osmo Action 3 and the Osmo Action 4, which I've been using for a little while now, but the principles I think would also be true on GoPros and other cameras such as Insta360. I'm gonna go through some of these problems and why they happen and then if you stick around till the end, I'll give you the camera settings that I use now that I've found deliver the best results. So the problem is not the stabilization function. The problem is the camera settings that you have for the lighting environments that you are in while you're mountain biking. Mountain biking has some of the harshest lighting environments to film in. So if you think about this as a lighting problem that you have to fix within your camera settings, it starts to make a little bit more sense. It is not the stabilization feature. The stabilization technology is good in these cameras. You don't need to go to Rocksteady Plus or to Rocksteady uh, Horizon Balance, whatever that one is. Rocksteady, the regular Rocksteady will work just fine. You need to change the exposure settings on your camera. All right, here is problem number one, why your footage looks like junk when you film a mountain bike ride. This problem is, HDR mode. On the DJI action camera, you need to turn HDR off, or rather select one of the other settings. If you're on the Action 3, you need to select the D-Cine-like color mode. If you have the Action 4, D-Log color mode. And selecting these will give you a little bit more control over the exposure settings on your camera. In HDR mode, everything is fully automatic. Your camera is making all the decisions for you while you go through different lighting situations. And this is what leads to bad stabilization. We'll get to why in a little bit. So the first thing you're gonna do is get out of HDR and go into the d -like or the D-Log color options. And then you have a number of choices for what to do next. So you have options for what to select with your shutter speed and your ISO range. Hey, before I go any further, if you're enjoying this video, if this is valuable information for you, please hit the like button now. I really appreciate that. And now I'm gonna get back to the camera settings. Hit it right. All right, you can go into automatic mode and shutter, but then you can select that it goes from say one over 200 um, or one over 400. And then your camera will automatically adjust the shutter speed given the lighting conditions within that range. And what you're doing is you're raising up the bottom end. So normally it would go down as low as say 60 or potentially even lower. And you're telling your camera, no, don't go any slower than one over 200th of a second. Okay, so here's why this is important for shutter speed. Let's focus on shutter speed now and then I'm gonna talk about ISO in a little bit. So the way your camera's stabilization technology works is frame by frame, it will match up the elements of that frame. Now it has a great deal of difficulty matching up frame by frame if the frames are blurry. You will get more blurry images if your shutter speed is slower. And when the frames are blurry, the camera stabilization feature has a really hard time matching one to the next. So that's one thing that's happening and that can be reduced if you limit the camera's range on the shutter speed so that it can't go too slow. And so for that reason, I prefer to set a range to let the camera do some of the work and semi-automatic and do a range usually from 200 up to the top end or uh, 400 up to a top end. And the next thing is your ISO ranges. Now you can set the ranges here as well. You're looking for the opposite thing. You want lower numbers in ISO to reduce potential graininess. So ISO is another way that your camera adjusts to different lighting situations. And in darker light situations, the ISO numbers will get higher and your your image quality will get a little bit more grainy. When you're filming mountain biking footage and you're going through a dark section of trail or a darker section of trail, um, if you allow the image quality to get too grainy, the stabilization technology will have the same problem. With the grainy footage, it has difficulty lining up frame to frame, and you start to get really weird stabilization things happening. You can actually see in this section of footage, which I shot on the Osmo Action 4, 
and it was the ISO being too high. I actually had a range going up to 1600, which was too high in this situation because it was quite dark and the, uh -oh. it, the footage got too grainy. The grainy One footage more. meant that the camera's stabilization technology couldn't quite keep up and you can see how the image kind of skips around and there's little uh, artifacts going on as I ride down the trail. For my ISO, I am definitely going to go with the upper limit of 800. I think it's 100 to 800. Oh, and one more thing before I forget, not doing HDR mode in the camera and choosing the D-Log color or decent alike, it does require additional work in post-production. And so I use DaVinci Resolve and I am not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. I do very minor things just to tweak the footage and get it to look the way I want it. But if you're interested and you want to hear about how I approach color grading and getting from from the, the raw kind of more flat footage to the finished product, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments as well and, and maybe I can make a video about that in the future. The other thing I haven't mentioned is EV comp. I mostly fill with negative 0.7 or negative one. I've heard of some mountain bikers going as low as negative two, negative two and a half. I'm really not sure what's best. If you have any additional thoughts on EV comp, feel free to leave a comment. I'd love to hear somebody smarter than me sharing a little bit of information on this topic. So there you have it. Those are the camera settings that I use to make sure I get the best and smoothest mountain biking footage. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to figure some things out. So if you have any additional comments, how to make your hyper smooth or your rock steady or whatever your stabilization features are, how to make those work better, definitely tell me in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them. All right, I know this was a lot. Thanks for putting up with me as I hacked my way through a lot of this information that is I'm certainly not an expert in but I've, I've learned some valuable things here and I hope you have too thanks for watching and there's gonna be more right here and right here see you next time